Hello, this is Joshua, and welcome to the course OPM for MBSE. Don't worry if you don't know what those terms mean, because we'll go through everything step by step. And by the end of this, you'll be quite the expert on the topics. So object process methodology for model-based systems engineering. Sounds quite technical, but who's this course for? Anyone wanting to learn how engineers logically design technical products? find this course very fascinating. Equally, anyone who's interested in systems would also find it interesting. But you might say, well, what is a system? I'm talking about the arrangement of parts and components to make something that is of interest to you. Anyone with an interest in systems engineering? Which is all about taking needs and turning them into solutions. Anyone interested in model-based systems engineering would also find this course interesting. And of course, given this in the title OPM, if you're interested in OPM, this course would also be interesting. And lastly, if you're just interested in new ways of communicating with people, learning new languages, you might also find this course worth taking. So let's take an introduction. The big ideas that you come away with in this course in more detail are number one, systems engineering enables the successful realization, use and retirement of engineered systems. Model-based systems engineering enables us to do systems engineering by utilizing a consistent model of our system. To make a model, we need purpose, methodology, language and tools. And OPM is an example of a conceptual model of language. OPM describes the system in both diagram and text simultaneously. And the key building blocks of OPM are objects, processes, and states. And we link all those things together. Okay, so that was quite a lot of technical jargon. And let's get right down into what OPM is. Here you can see an example of an OPM model. And right in the center, that's going to work. To the left, you can see person, and person is affected by going to work. So without much knowledge of this language, we can say, well, maybe this is sort of doing something, or this is the thing that's being acted upon. And also there's car here, and car is interacting with going to work. So maybe car enables going to work. And then car is made up of these parts, wheels, body, engine. You can start to see that, well, perhaps this is the item which is used by this process, and this is the object that is worked on by going to work. So you'll be right in that this is not the diagram component of OPM, or well, here we have the language component. And both of these are representing the same information. If we read this text, going to work affects person, going to work affects person. Person can be at home or at work, these are the states of the person. And going to work requires car, and car consists of wheels, body and engine, and engine can be on or off. So with a single diagram type, we can show behavior, going to work is a behavior, and structure. So car is made up of these different parts. And complexity is managed by hierarchical composition. So that was a very quick taste of the language we'll be learning on this course. Let's pull out some key points about OPM. It's a simple and easy language to learn. It's good at describing the concept of a new system. And it combines diagrams with text descriptions. So by the end of this course, you should be able to do the following things. Be familiar with the fields of systems and systems engineering. Be familiar of the concept of model-based systems engineering, MBSE. 
and you understand why we must choose their language for any models we make. And you can describe the purpose of your model such that you can choose an appropriate language. And you understand the need for a methodology for creating a model. You'll also be familiar with OPM, including basic OPM syntax, the relationship between the diagram and text, have a basic methodology for creating OPM models from user needs. And you'll be familiar with the ideas of managing model complexity. And finally, you'll be familiar with some tools for creating OPM models. So I know on those tools, you can do this course with something no more complicated than pen and paper or a whiteboard or PowerPoint and Google Slides. But in the course, we will show some free software which you can use to make OPM diagrams, which are even more professional looking and also be made in a way which saves time and effort. So if this is interesting to you, I look forward to you joining the course. Thank you. So remember to click on the link in the description below to join the full course.